Jetstream 2 is a sound design toolkit for Native Instruments Contact 3 and above. And in this video, I'll give you a brief tour of the interface and show how easy it is to use Jetstream 2 to create new sound effects, from sustained ambiences to short hits and sweeps through to chromatic synthesizers. So on Jetstream 2, then, we have five pages on the interface. And the first one is the mixer page. The mixer page is divided into two parts. On the left, we have the assign section. And then on the right, we have four mixer strips. So the structure here is that you have four sounds that you can play simultaneously. And to each of those sounds, you can assign one of 50 loops that are included with Jetstream 2. The interface is color coded to make it easy to find your way around. So if we start with sound one, we can see that that's got a green background. And so this menu here with the green edge is the one that we use to assign one of these loops to sound number one. You can assign a loop or you can assign no loop. You can set it to none. Or you can assign the same loop to more than one sound and then play it in different ways on different sounds simultaneously. So currently we have three sounds assigned, City Junction to sound number one, Hesperus to sound number two, Real Old to sound number three. And sound four doesn't have anything assigned to it at the moment. Moving over to the mixer strips then, these are the most common controls that you'd use to set up a mix between the four sounds. You have a volume control, a pan control, which determines the stereo position from left to right, a width control, which goes from mono up to natural stereo, a pitch control, which covers 36 semitones up and down, and then a start control, which sets where the playhead uh, begins in the loop that you've assigned to that sound. Now, as you'll see from looking at the interface, each of these goes from 0 to 100, or in some cases from 100 through to minus 100. And that was a deliberate design decision just to make it really easy to see at a glance what everything is set to and to not have to worry about whether something is to a set at a precise amount of decibels or semitones. Instead, it's just about picking a value between uh, minus 100 and plus 100. And that makes it really quick and effective to design sounds. These buttons at the top let you turn sounds on and off while you're holding a note, which means you can audition uh, individual sounds within the mix really easily. So that is the first page, the mixer page. Moving on to the second page, which deals with filters, what we have here is controls that are specific to each of the four sounds, and we can view one sound at a time. So the color coding follows through. We've got the same color scheme as on the first page. But what we're looking at here is three filters for each of the four sounds. And these are completely independent of one another. So you can configure filters for sound one, and then you can configure different filters for sound two, three, and four. The filters are as follows. You have a high pass filter, which removes low frequencies, a low pass filter that removes high frequencies, and then a phaser, which changes the tone of the whole sound. Again, everything is calibrated from 0 to 100, which makes it really easy to use. And the frequency setting for these first two filters determines the point at which the filter takes effect. And the resonance determines the way frequencies around that point are boosted. So when you turn the resonance up, you get a kind of whistling tone to the sound. The phaser is slightly different because it creates peaks and notches in the sound across the whole frequency range. And in this case, uh, the frequency and resonance dials determine the spacing and the steepness of those peaks and notches. So it's a really useful filter to experiment with if you want to change the tone of the whole sound, whereas the high pass and the low pass uh, filters are more targeted at specific frequency ranges. And you can turn them on and off with these buttons at the bottom. And again, what you do on this page is completely independent from what you do for any of the other sounds. On the Mixer Mod page, we can modulate or change over time the parameters that we set on the first Mixer page. 
So on the mixer page we have volume, pan and pitch. And on the mixer mod page we also have volume, pan and pitch. And what these controls do is set the ways in which volume, pan and pitch change over time. Very useful if you set them to slow values for ambient sustained textures. But if you set them to fast values, they're also useful because they can create more kind of radical uh, sounds which work well if you're creating short hits and sweeps. The depth spinner for volume, pan and pitch determines the range of change that happens to that parameter. So for example, when volume is set to 100% depth, that means it will modulate between silence and full volume. Whereas at lower values, it won't go all the way down to silence. And similarly with pan, at 100% it will go all the way from left to right, but at lower values it will just move around in, in the centre, moving slightly from left to right. Pitch works in the same way over the frequency range. The speed determines how quickly uh, the depth that you've set here will be travelled over. And then at the bottom of each of these uh, columns, you have the ability to choose the shape of the modulation from sine to triangle. And roughly speaking, sine gives a slightly smoother transition from the maximum to the minimum uh, range. And triangle gives us a more linear change from the maximum to the minimum. But either shape is useful for creating slow evolving textures, which is one of the things that Jetstream really excels at. Moving on to the filters mod page then, we keep the same kind of layout and we have, uh, again, independent controls for each of the sounds. We have the ability to change the frequency of the high pass, low pass and phaser over time by setting the depth um, parameter for each of those and again changing the rate at which that change happens. We can choose between sine and triangle shapes for each of those modulations and by sweeping the filters in this way it's really easy to create slowly evolving sounds but also by setting them to quite high speeds it's very useful for short sharp transient sounds where the filter kind of rips up and down the frequency range as you press the key. Moving then finally to the global page, what you have here is ways of affecting the output of all four sounds together. In the tracking section, you can choose whether the note that you play on your MIDI keyboard affects the frequency of Jetstream 2's sounds. You can turn that on and off independently for each of the four sounds. With the envelope, you can shape the volume of the output of Jetstream. So with a slow attack and a long release, you can create a gentle ambient sound. Or you can choose a very fast attack. If you set the sustain to zero, you can uh, create a, a brief transient sound that will just decay and then disappear in the time that you set with the release uh, spinner. So you can really transform the sound using these envelope controls and basically the output of all four sounds that you've selected will be channeled through this envelope. So it's a way of shaping all of them together. Similarly with the equalizer, that will affect the frequency character of all four sounds together. And the space control lets you determine the stereo width of all four from a fully widened artificial stereo down to mono. And then you can process it using one of these built-in impulse responses which is like a multi-effects unit containing delays, reverbs, unusual textures, things that you couldn't get uh, from a simple reverb or delay plugin, but kind of hybrid effects. And you can go from using just a small amount of those all the way up to fully wet to completely change the character of the sound. And finally, you have some dynamics controls, which uh, let you adjust the volume of the output of Jetstream. RMS compression works on the average volume of the signal and is useful for sustained tones just to level them out. And the limiter is useful for taming the peaks of shorter transient sounds. Once you've applied compression, you might want to raise the overall level and the boost control lets you apply a simple volume boost to the final output. So that's the interface of Jetstream 2. As you can see, it's uh, very easy to use. It's really quick and effective for creating new sounds from the built-in loops. 
and I hope you create lots of fantastic sounds with it. Thanks for your time.